Now that we have all the terms of our model entered, let's click Run to see the analysis output. Now the first place that I like to look is under the Effect Test section, because this will give us our test for the overall effects, that is, the main effects here, the two-way interactions, and then the three-way interaction. Now, a general rule, although it's not really a rule but a suggestion, is to start with the highest order term, that is the three-way interaction, and work backwards. Now, part of the reason for this is that interactions to some degree qualify overall or main effects. For instance, notice that we have a statistically significant interaction of route by time of day. This is giving us some indication that whatever route effect there is depends on time of day. So, the time of day effect and route effect may really be qualified by this two-way interaction. So, by starting at the highest order term, we come across those interactions first before we get too excited about the main effects. But, no matter how you look through this table, we'll be looking at all the terms eventually. So, really, we should be looking at this effect test section as something we want to process holistically. Now, because we're going to be producing our plots, and we're going to produce a lot of output below to really understand these effects, here's something that I like to do in Jump. I like to take that selection tool, which you can get to in the menu bar or under the tools menu. I like to select the effect test section and journal the output so I can retain it at the top of my screen. To journal this output, I'll press Command J. If you're on the PC, you'll press Control J. And what I'll do is I'll put this journal to the right hand top of my screen so we can reference it as we go through the different effects. Let me return to the fit model output and I'll deselect the output by clicking the arrow key. And what I want to do is minimize some of this output so we can produce the least squares means plots. Remember, we'll find those under the effect details section, but we haven't produced them yet. Right now, we only have the least squares means tables. To produce the plots, we can click on a red triangle and select least squares means plot. But since we have a lot of sources, I'm going to want to produce these all at once. If you remember, we can produce them all at once by holding down the command key or control if you're on the PC, then go to the red triangle and turn on least squares means plot. What we get now is all the plots for all the different sources produced all at once. This will be useful for us as we go through interpreting the outputs. If you like, we can also turn on the least squares means tables. We don't necessarily need these on, so either we can go to the red triangle and deselect them, or let me hold down command and click the gray triangle next to one of the least squares means tables and notice that it hides all of them, so we can get rid of them without really turning them off. Now one final thing I'll do, since I want to make these a little bit bigger, is I'll hold down Command, go to the bottom right hand side, and just drag one of these out. Remember, by holding down Command, we're going to resize all the graphs all at once. This is again handy, especially when we have lots of sources. All right, so let's look through our different effects, and notice that the organization of the effect details will mirror our effect test section. Now, we could start at the end and work backwards, but I'm going to start at the beginning so we can look through our main effects first and then build on those to understand the interaction terms. Now, first, our day of week effect. This is like our main effect in any other factorial analysis we've seen. This is the overall effect averaging over the different observations in the different factors. So, Monday here is ignoring really the rest of our factor structure. Overall, what were the Monday observations and what was the average time to campus there? Notice we had a statistically significant effect for day of week, and we can interpret this in the plot by simply looking at the means. If we wanted to follow up on any of these specifically, that is if we wanted to do pairwise comparisons, we can use any of the options we've seen before. I recommend least squares means contrast, since this will allow us to dial in the specific levels we want to compare. Or if we have comparisons to a control, we can use Dunnett's, or Tukey HSD if we want to make all pairwise comparisons within this factor. Now if I scroll down, we can move on to the route effect. Here is the route effect that we saw actually before. Again, a statistically significant result that we can see in our effect test section over there. And again, if we wanted to follow up on any of those means, make specific comparisons, we can again click on the red triangle next to route and use any of the options we've seen before. Finally, our time of day effect, what we saw in the past as well, which is again showing us the overall effect for our time of day factor. So ignoring the rest of our structure, do we see effects at the different times of day? Now again, we could follow up on any pairwise comparison using the red triangle, using contrast, students T, two key HSD, or even Dunnett's. Remember that two key HSD and Dunnett's will perform alpha corrected procedures. That is controlling for the number of comparisons, we won't escalate our overall alpha level. 
From this point on, we'll be considering interactions. So first, the three two-way interactions, then finally, that three-way interaction. Let me scroll down to the first two-way interaction. Here, we have day of week by route. Notice what this is plotting. Ignoring the different times of day, we're showing the averages here. This is an average for Monday at Genesee Drive over the different times of day. Similarly, at the end, we have Friday averaging over the different times of day for Nobel Drive. So this plot is showing us averaging over the different times of day, the two-way interaction between route and day of week. So from this, we can assess, do we think that whatever route effect there is, is similar across the different days a week? Or whatever day of week effect we think there is, whether that's similar across the different routes? Like we've done for all two-way interactions, you can think of this as the degree to which one of these factors is changing the effect of the other. But now we have three separate two-way interactions. So when we're assessing the degree to which day of week and route are interacting, we'll look here. To assess the degree to which day of week and time of day interact, we'll look in the second. And to assess the degree to which route and time of day are interacting, we'll look to the third. Notice that it was only this final two-way interaction for which we had statistically significant evidence of an interaction. And we can see this if we look in the plot. Here we can see that the different routes aren't really parallel across the times of day. That is, there's a different effect for route at different times of day. So the routes are closer together at 9.30 than at 8 o'clock. Or seen differently, the effect of time of day was different across the different routes. For Gilman Drive, it's relatively flat across the different times of day. Whereas at the top, Genesee Drive, it's actually taking less time at 9.30 than it is at 8 o'clock. Now let's compare this interaction plot to the other two, where we didn't have evidence of an interaction. Notice that for these plots, the lines are pretty parallel. Now they're not perfectly parallel. Notice that there are some situations where they cross over, but that's not statistically significant evidence that there's really an interaction in the population. We expect these means to have some error. So in the degree that they're not parallel, we're finding evidence towards an interaction, but these plots show us generally parallel effects for the different interactions. So especially if we look at this one day of week by time of day, these lines are pretty parallel.